It's a very important and a very difficult question. I mean, the first thing one has to say is that photography is a very broad church and that one person's idea of extremely valuable work may not meet somebody else's standards. My own feeling, and I've published this many times, is that we need to establish some kind of shared vocabulary in which to describe quality. That without that shared vocabulary, everybody's opinion is as good as everybody else's, which is fine and is part of the old habit of photography. Photography is very broad. But in that breadth, we need to establish some kind of recognition for things which matter. And mattering is a word that I've been writing about recently. It's a very difficult word. It's not a proper verb. But somehow we can tell in photographs whether the subject matters, the way the subject is treated matters to the photographer and to the people who distribute it. And that's the nearest I can get to answering the question of quality, that somehow, when it matters, people are prepared to concentrate harder on receiving it. And when it doesn't matter, photography always stays trivial. Because it's so easy to make a photograph, only discrimination can sort out the ones that are worth attention, concentration, and further distribution. Without some kind of intellectual mechanism which says, we are at least trying to isolate quality, to identify quality, to recognize and reproduce quality, then you get this terrible, terrible thing which is just meaningless transcription of pixels. Unfortunately, it's not a very easy thing to do. And because it's so easy to make pictures and so difficult to identify quality, there is always a gap there. But certainly my own sense is that photographers, distributors, receivers need to spend more effort learning how to look. And that once you've started to do that, you can start codifying your looking into different kinds of systems, which hopefully will guide you through the future. But without that first effort of concentrated, patient, rather studious looking, then all pictures come alike to all viewers. And it's terribly important that they should be discriminated. There's a peculiar split in photography from a long, long time ago between what the pictures are about and the way the pictures are actually made. In other art forms, this has never been a problem. You go to the movies, you know that there's some style involved, but you also know that the film is about something. In photography, most people, most of the time, confuse those two. They can't really easily tell a picture of something from a picture about something. And as a starting point, to keep on testing the merit of the about part of that equation is publicly accessible, it doesn't involve great scholarship, it is a way of starting. I'm accused when I say these things of being elitist, and all I can say is that photography is a fantastically un-elitist practice, but that some degree of identifying merit is a very, very useful exercise to go through. I hope it's not elitist. I don't want it to be elitist, but I do think one has to say that's not actually a very good photograph, even though its subject may be very important.